Hey guys, welcome to Home Automation at Home. In the last video, I showed you guys how to get HapNode.js up and running on your server. Hopefully you guys got it working on your Raspberry Pis, even though I didn't get it working on mine. And in the last video, I showed you guys not only how to get HapNode.js running, but also how to implement a uh, RGB light accessory that went with the RGB lights that we built in the video previous to that. In this video, I want to show you guys how to integrate HomeKit with the relay lights or relay modules that we built all the way back in the second video. So in today's video, we're not going to have any fancy video or anything. We're just going to take a look at the code and trust me that it works. I've built these and I've used them in my house. You'll notice that the code looks pretty similar to the code from the last video. And that's because it is. Really, this is actually way simpler than the code from the RGB lights because rather than implementing the hue, saturation, and brightness, we're only implementing power on and off. So really, it's just the same code from last time, but stripped down quite a bit. So up at the top, you could see the unique things that need to be changed to match your setup and actually even some that just have to be unique to each individual accessory. So you can see I have the name, which is just the name that will show up in your HomeKit app, a unique ID, and then a username. And all three of these need to be unique to each and every single uh, accessory that you make, not just the relay accessories that you have, but if you have a relay uh, accessory for your dining room light and a relay accessory for your bedroom light they need these settings all need to be unique to each of those so the username it's all just hex so just you know fill in some different hex values and try to make it as jumbled and unique as possible so that it doesn't clash with anything else and for the unique ID I would just make it you know relay one relay two and so on the MQTT IP and light topic, we've been dealing with these for many videos now. You get the idea, just fill in the things that match your specific setup. And moving down, you can see we have our same MQTT setup. Again, we're, in this one, we're not subscribed to anything, even though I do have the on message function here. We're kind of ignoring it. And then down here, I have the setup for my light object for HomeKit. So you can see I create a light object with the unique ID and generate an ID based off of the string I gave it. And we create a new accessory, a new light accessory, and give it a username and the pin code that we'll put in on iOS to register it with HomeKit. And then, unlike the last video, we only have one characteristic that we're having to deal with. We have the get and set functions for that characteristic, but it's just the on characteristic. And so all that happens is down here in light action, we have two functions, get state and, get state and set state. And get state, really simple, just returns the current state of the light. And set state goes ahead and checks to see if the incoming, the new state is equal to on and if it's equal to on and it's currently off, or if it's being set to off and is currently on, so basically this if statement just checks that there is actually a difference uh, in the new state versus the current state, we print out to our log, and then if it's new state is equal to true, we tell our client, our MQTT client to publish a one and set our state to one, Otherwise, we publish a zero and set it to zero. So that's the set state. It's, it's really, it's pretty simple. So yeah, that's all there really is to the code. Uh, the last thing is down here at the bottom, we have this little two second interval here, this function that fires off every two seconds. And this just updates, it, ru it runs the uh, set characteristic for on and sets it to the current state. And this just basically updates the iOS device, your iPhone, iPod, whatever, with whatever the current state of the light is. 
Now, it's not receiving anything from the light. It's just kind of getting updated on whatever the your iPhone or whatever sent last. And this is necessary because iOS doesn't actually uh, just hold on to whatever value it received last. It actually needs to be sent that information periodically. So this just handles updating the iOS device every two seconds with the current state. So yeah, that's all there is to this code. And hopefully you, you should just be able to drop it right in, restart your, uh, your Hapno.js server and add it on your iPhone or iPod and just have a little on off flick switch that controls your relays. So yeah, that's all there is to it. Uh, I know this is kind of a shorter mini home automation at home video, but I figured I haven't done one in a while and I wanted to keep this going. Uh, if you like the video, definitely give it a little thumbs up. And also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. I'm always putting out new content. I try to mix it up a little bit with electronics programming and a little bit of metalworking even. So yeah, definitely subscribe if it seems like your thing. All right, well, that's all there is for today. I'll see you guys later.